Paroxymal Nocturnal Hemoglobinuria, PNH. You know what's nope. not fun? Waking up in the middle of the night because your own body is sneak attacking your blood. That's Paroxymal Nocturnal Hemoglobinuria, or PNH. Basically, the horror movie of rare genetic disorders. It's a rare genetic disorder where your immune system gets confused and starts yeeting your red blood cells like they're intruders. Spoiler, they're not. The real problem here starts when your bone marrow makes blood cells without their proper armor, which is basically the protective proteins that tell your immune system to chill out and not nope. kill them. So without those tags, your immune system does what it does best, goes full attack mode and starts shredding your red blood cells like junk mail, especially while you sleep. Yeah, your body literally schedules blood sabotage for the PM shift. So you wake up exhausted, not because you stayed up doom scrolling, but because your blood is being quietly demolished. Bonus fun, your urine might look like Coca-Cola. That's from all the busted blood cells getting flushed out. Erythropoietic protoporphyria, EPP. You step outside, feel the sun on your skin, and your entire body immediately blisters like you high-fived a stovetop. That's erythropoietic protoporphyria, EPP for short, if you're on a first-name basis with pain. This condition is a rare genetic disorder where your body can't properly break down a substance called protoporphyrin, and in your body, it's basically a sun-reactive landmine. When light hits your skin, it activates that protoporphyrin in your blood, and boom, intense burning, stabbing pain, swelling, and redness. No blisters, just invisible agony. And here's the kicker, it's not just sunburn pain, it's my skin is screaming but no one can see it pain. People with EPP often can't go outside without protective clothing, gloves, and UV proof everything. Even cloudy skies and window sunlight are still bad. It's like being allergic to the entire sky. Most people with EPP aren't diagnosed right away. They just know playing outside hurts and no one believes them. Sadly, there's no cure, just management. However, if you want to cure my sadness, please subscribe right now. Thanks. Mobius syndrome. Have you ever tried to smile at someone and your face just doesn't? Not because you're shy or trying to play it cool, but because you physically can't. That's Mobius syndrome. It's a rare neurological disorder where the facial nerves responsible for movement just don't develop right. No smiling, no frowning, no blinking. Your expression is frozen like a paused video. And it's not just a face thing. This condition can mess with your ability to chew, speak, swallow, and even move your eyes side to side. Try having a full conversation without being able to show emotion or shift your gaze. It's not just hard, it's socially isolating. People misread you constantly. You're stuck behind a facial firewall your whole life. And even though it's genetic, it's not always inherited. Sometimes it usually just shows up from a random mutation, which makes it even scarier that there's no cure, no fix. The only thing you can do is management with therapies, surgeries, and adaptations. You don't grow out of it, you just get used to people assuming you're cold and blank when you're actually just trapped behind your own face. Pachyonychia congenita. Have you ever mistakenly walked across broken glass or uh, Lego pieces? Painful, right? Now imagine doing it every day, even when you're barefoot, indoors, or just standing still. That's what life can feel like with Pachyonychia congenita, a rare genetic disorder that sounds like a dinosaur name, but hits more like a medieval punishment. It's caused by a mutation in one of the keratin genes, which is the stuff your nails, hair, and skin are made of. When this genetic glitch flips on, your body starts pumping out super strong keratin in all the wrong ways. The result is toenails and fingernails that grow thick, curved, and claw-like. Which isn't cute at all, but that's just the welcome gift. The real horror show is in the feet. People with PC grow painful calluses and blisters from any pressure, like walking, standing, or wearing shoes that aren't made of clouds. Their skin becomes blistered, and it's not just the feet. People with PC can get painful cysts and white patches on their tongue also. There's no cure, just pain management, and by management we mean trimming your nails with power tools and living in shoes that feel like padded cells. It's isolating, constant, and invisible to most people, which somehow makes it worse. 
Alcaptanuria. In the natural order of things, there's supposed to be a cleaning crew for every situation. And, well, your body is not exempt. Now, just imagine what would happen if that cleaning crew just stopped showing up to work. Well, Alcaptanuria would happen. And this condition is a rare genetic disorder where your body can't properly break down certain amino acids, specifically tyrosine and phenylalanine. Normally, these guys would get processed and excreted like everything else you don't need. But in people with alcaptanuria, one tiny enzyme called homogentisate 1,2-dioxygenase disappears. And once there's no enzyme, there's no breakdown. Instead, a chemical called homogentisic acid builds up like garbage piling up in your tissues. At first, the symptoms start very low-key. Your pee turns dark when it hits air. Creepy, sure, but manageable. But then the acid starts crashing in places it doesn't belong. Cartilage, joints, heart valves, even your spine. It's called ochronosis, and it basically fossilizes your body from the inside out. Your joints start to stiffen, pain kicks in, and even moving starts to feel like grinding rocks together. People often don't get diagnosed until adulthood when the damage is already setting up shop. Once again, there's no cure, so just pain management, physical therapy, and trying to keep your body from locking up like a rusted hinge. A dermatoglyphia, immigration delay disease. It's a rare genetic condition where you're born without fingerprints. Like zero, your fingertips are as smooth as a marble countertop. Imagine trying to unlock your phone, clear airport security, or sign a document, and your body's like, nah, I'm good. Sounds kind of cool at first, like you're a ghost in the system or part-time spy. But then reality hits and you realize that fingerprints mean no biometric ID, and in today's world, that's a big problem. Border agents don't exactly love it when your fingertips return nothing on the scanner, hence the nickname Immigration Delay Disease. Even though this condition isn't as serious or as deadly as the rest, it can still make simple things like passport control, job applications, or even getting a driver's license way more complicated. And since fingerprints are usually taken for granted, most systems don't know what to do when they're just not there. Morgani Stewart Morell Syndrome. You ever heard of a disorder that turns your skull into a bone thickening helmet and messes with your hormones, mood, and metabolism all at the same time? Yep, it exists, and its name is Morgani Stewart Morell Syndrome. It starts when the front part of your skull starts thickening like it's preparing for battle. That bone growth pushes on the brain, triggering headaches, seizures, and sometimes full-blown personality changes. People report memory problems, confusion, even depression or psychosis. It's like your brain's being squished into a bad mood. But it doesn't end here. This thing also comes with a hormonal horror show. Since the pituitary gland's getting involved, you can see irregular periods, fertility problems, weight gain, and sometimes unwanted body hair. It's like your body's running a hormonal lottery and every spin is bad news. It mostly affects women, often after age 30, but here's the kicker, doctors don't fully know why it happens. It's linked to estrogen, genetics, and maybe endocrine disorders, but there's no solid cause or cure. You can treat the symptoms, sure, but the bone? It stays. Trimethylaminuria, fish odor syndrome. No matter how much you shower, how much deodorant you use, you still smell like a skunk who showered in fish water every single day. It's happening everywhere, in school, at work, and even when you're at home. Sounds intriguing, but this condition is trimethylaminuria, aka fish odor syndrome. It's a rare genetic disorder where your body can't break down a chemical called trimethylamine, the stuff that makes dead fish smell like, well, dead fish. In people without TMAU, the liver neutralizes it. But in people with TMAU, the chemical gets released through your sweat, breath, and urine like a personal antisocial air freshener. The worst part is, you nope. can't smell this fish if it's yourself. Your body thinks it's being totally chill, while everyone else is silently Googling, how do you tell someone they smell like cod? It's not dangerous, but it's absolutely brutal. Imagine the mental toll of being treated like a hygiene disaster when it's your genetics, not your habits. Troyer Syndrome. 
You've probably never heard of Troyer Syndrome, and honestly, your nervous system would like to keep nope. it that way. It sounds like the name of a metal band, but it's actually a rare genetic disorder that hits the body and brain like a double sucker punch. Troyer Syndrome starts with a mutation in the SPG20 gene, which basically messes up how your cells handle important jobs, especially in the nervous system. This basically causes your body to slowly forget how to move properly. Kids with this condition might seem clumsy at first, walking on their toes, wobbling like a toddler on a sugar high, but it gets worse. Eventually their muscles would start to tighten while their legs weaken. Walking would even become a daily battle, and eventually some people need mobility aids just to get around. But this isn't just a muscle thing. Nope, Troyer syndrome also goes upstairs and messes with cognitive function. That means slower speech, learning challenges, emotional swings, all in one relentless package. Imagine trying to focus, move, and speak clearly, but your own genes are throwing static on every channel. It's super rare, mostly found in Amish and Mennonite communities due to how the mutation passes through generations. No cure, just symptom management and a lot of daily grit. Holomon Strife Syndrome Imagine what it feels like being trapped in a body that never followed the blueprint. That's Hollerman strife Syndrome, an ultra-rare genetic disorder where development hits all the wrong switches. Kids born with it often have a tiny jaw, dental issues, and microphthalmia, meaning their eyes are too small for normal vision. Some are even born blind. Breathing can be so restricted that a tracheostomy is needed just to get enough air. This is because their airways and skull don't develop like they should. Think small face, small head, and a windpipe the size of a cocktail straw. What makes it terrifying isn't just how rare it is, fewer than 300 cases have ever been documented, but how complex and relentless it is. The skull bones don't fuse properly, the face doesn't grow the way it should, and yet the brain is perfectly fine. That's right, kids with Holloman Stripe often have average or above average smarts. Nope. Their bodies just didn't get the memo. So while they're stuck in and out of hospitals, wearing medical devices, and dealing with stares from strangers, they're fully aware of everything that's happening. Every surgery, every comment, every limitation. A Tau Syndrome You've got 23 pairs of chromosomes. That's the genetic blueprint for you, from your eye color to whether cilantro tastes like soap. But sometimes the blueprint goes off script. Patau syndrome, also called trisomy 13, is one of those moments where biology straight up loses the plot. It happens when there's an extra copy of chromosome 13. Not just a glitch, this is full-blown genetic chaos. That one rogue chromosome affects basically everything during development. The brain, heart, kidneys, face, we're talking severe brain structure issues. Cleft lip and palate, missing or malformed eyes, prolodactyly, aka extra fingers, and heart defects that make survival nearly impossible. It's like the body tries to build itself, but with the wrong instructions. The result of this condition is that most babies with Patau syndrome don't make it past the first few weeks of life. Some don't make it to birth at all. It's rare, it's random, and it's absolutely brutal. There's no fixing the chromosome, just managing the pain and offering comfort. Red-green color blindness. Imagine trying to cook chicken and not being totally sure if it's raw, because red and green look the same. That's red-green color blindness, and no, it's not seeing in black and white. It's more like your brain got the Crayola pack, but two of the most important crayons are weirdly similar. This condition usually hits people with a glitch on the X chromosome, which is why it shows up way more in guys. Around 1 in 12 men have it. That's millions of people walking around guessing at traffic lights, salad freshness, and whether their sunburn is pink cute or hospital time. It's not just a minor inconvenience. Imagine being a pilot, an electrician, or a designer. Jobs where color is not optional. Now imagine not knowing you're colorblind until you fail a test in front of a room full of people. Yeah, awkward. And it's sneaky. A lot of people don't even realize they have it until adulthood. Their whole life, they've been calling gray things green and wondering why no one laughs at their Christmas sweater. And for those of you with red-green color blindness, remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. L-H-O-N. 
You wake up one day and the world looks fuzzy. You blink, rub your eyes, try again, nope, still blurry. And within weeks, your central vision, gone. Like someone cut a hole in the middle of your sight. That's LHON, a genetic condition where your optic nerve just pieces out. This condition is strictly only inherited through the mitochondrial DNA, aka the stuff you get straight from your mom. So even if she has perfect vision, she might be carrying the biological blueprint for an optic nerve disaster. Most people don't even know they have it. You could be totally healthy, then out of nowhere, your optic nerves decide they're done working. No early warning, no gentle decline, just sudden irreversible blindness right where you needed your vision the most. And while women can carry it, LHON hits young men the hardest, usually between ages 15 and 30. Great timing, right? <sighs> There's no treatment that fully reverses it. Once it starts, the damage is fast and permanent. SCID, Severe Combined Immunodeficiency. Most babies are born ready to cry, sneeze, drool, and survive a world full of germs. But babies with SCID, their immune system forgot to RSVP to life. Severe combined immunodeficiency is a rare genetic disorder where the two main parts of your immune system, T cells and B cells, are missing. Basically, your body's defense squad called in sick forever. This means even the tiniest cold virus could be life-threatening. A sneeze from a stranger? Dangerous. A kiss from a parent? Risky. A live vaccine? Fatal. Germs that your average toddler would shake off in a day could send a child with SCID into a full-blown medical emergency. That's why some kids with SCID grow up in literal sterile bubbles. Think hospital-grade isolation just to stay alive. What makes it even scarier is the fact that babies with SEID often look completely normal at birth. The danger doesn't show up until their first infection, then things unravel fast. No immune defense means no way to fight back. And sadly, without a bone marrow transplant or experimental gene therapy, most won't survive past their first birthday.